In this section we'll be using ProSoft Configuration Builder to configure the various Modbus ports and when we're finished we'll download the application to the module. So let's go ahead and get started. So now I'll open ProSoft Configuration Builder. Once it opens you notice we have a standard menu bar. We'll be talking about a few of these options as we progress. So for now I'll right click on Default Module. We'll go down to Choose Module Type and once the choose module type window opens I'll select MVI 69 and from the pull down menu I'll choose MVI 69 MCM click OK now we'll expand the MVI 69 MCM and here we'll give the module a comment we'll just give it a generic comment click OK expand the backplane 69 section click on backplane 69 and now from here we can double click on it to change the parameters here we have the read register start that's the starting address of data within the module that will be going to the CPU and the read register count is how many of those read registers are going to the CPU and the write register start is the location of where the module places the data that comes from your CPU so on the back plane, when the CPU sends data to the module, well, it's going to start storing it at the right register start address. And the right register count, that's how many registers it's going to store from the CPU. So as we zoom in, we'll take a look at the back plane 69 section. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way for now. Move it down to the bottom left. And now we see our internal database. The module has 5,000 registers that we can use. Now if we take a look at the database as how we have it defined, we'll notice that we break it down into sections. So we have our read register start, which is starting at address 1000. And then we have a read register count for 480. That means we have 480 values that we can pass from the Modbus network to the module to the CPU. And then the next section the next section is the write register start. The write register start is set at 0 and also for a count of 480. So that means we have 480 values that we can pass from the CPU to the module out to the Modbus network. And we have a section, the highlighted section there, of unused registers. Now how does all this fit in with the Modbus? Well, on the Modbus network, you know that you have a Compact Logic CPU and a Modbus network. The Compact Logic CPU writes the addresses 0 to 479 of the internal database on the MVI 69 module. And now, those 480 registers, those 480 registers can be used to write to Modbus devices on your Modbus network. Now, you write those values by way of Modbus master commands, which we'll get into in the next section and values from the Modbus network are stored in addresses 1000 to 1479 of the internal database. Anytime we go through any of these different options anywhere within the module, you'll notice on the right hand side there under definition, it explains all the different fields and what they do. So then we have our backplane fail count. That's the number of backplane failures that need to occur before the Modbus communication stops. And then we have the error status block pointer. That's an address within the module where we can store status information for the module. This needs to be stored within the read data register range. So you're going to want to put this status pointer between addresses, if you're going to use it, you want to put it between addresses 1000 and 1479. Right now you notice that it's set to 3000. Well at address 3000, it's never going to be used. Then you have the initialize output data. What the initialize output data does, it allows the module to get values from the controller before starting any Modbus communications. In other words, what happens is when you cycle power to the module, say you cycle power with the cold or warm boot bit within ladder, well that zeroes out the module's database. Well when you zero out the module's database, Modbus communication starts and it may send zeros where there should be data. So with this parameter set, it'll get values from the controller before it sends any Modbus data. And then you have the block transfer size. This defines how many data words per block are being sent between the module and the CPU. 
and this parameter has no bearing on your Modbus network. This is only for communications between the CPU and the MVI 69 MCM. So now we'll click OK on that and then we'll click on MCM port 1 and then double click on MCM port 1. Now we have all the parameters for port 1. We see we have our baud rate settings, we have our protocol, you define whether the port is enabled, whether the port's going to be a master or slave. So right now I'm going to go ahead and click on yes to enable the port. I'm going to click on the port type. I'm going to set my port type to master. So I'm going to go down here to command error pointer and I'm going to change command error pointer to 1400. And then we'll click OK on that. Now let's go into the Modbus master command. So now I'm going to click on Modbus port 1. So now we'll double click on Modbus port 1 commands 69 MCM and we can click on add row. Basically what that does is that adds a Modbus command. So now we can double click on any portion of that row and now we have settings for our commands. And the first setting is the enable column. The enable column defines whether the command is enabled and how the command gets executed. Again you, you have the definition on the right here and you can read the definition of what this parameter does. Real quickly I'll tell you that an enable code of yes is a continuous command which means the command's always going to execute and a zero or no means that the command's not enabled and you have a conditional command which is only valid for write commands so if values within the database changes then the command executes and the only way the values will change is if the CPU changes them. So then we go down to our internal database that's the address for the command. So if it's a write command, then it's going to look in that database address and send those values out. If it's a read command, then it's going to grab values from the field or your Modbus devices and store it in the internal database address. Then you have the pull interval. The pull interval defines how often the command will execute. Then you have the reg count or register count. If it's a read command, then it's going to read the amount of registers that you have in the count parameter here. If it's a write command, then it's going to write that number of values out to the Modbus network. And then there's the swap code. The swap code allows you to swap the bytes, swap the words, or you can swap the words and the bytes. Then you have your node address. This is the node address for the Modbus device that this command will be communicating with. Then you have the Modbus function code. The Modbus function code defines what function will be executed, so what kind of data will be written or read from the device. And then you have Modbus address in device. This is your this is your Modbus register within the device. So for instance, if it's reading holder registers, 4x, that means it's going to read 40,000 range registers. And lastly, you can give the command a comment, so you know what the command's doing. Okay, so if you remember in our database setup, in the MVI69 backplane setup, we specified that read registers are going to start at address 1000 to 1479. In other words, 480 registers. Well, right now, I have the internal address set at zero. Well, zero to 479 is used for write data, so data that's going out. Since this is a read command, I need to set that address to at least 1000 and higher, or between 1000 and 1479. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and set that to 1000. So we'll set that to 1000. I'll change my count to 10. That means I want to read 10 registers. And Modbus address and device, I'll leave it 0, which is 40,001. Then I'll click OK on that. Then what I can do, I can click on the Copy Row button. Copy Row button is kind of handy in that you don't have to recreate every command. So I can click on Copy Row. And since I'm going to the same node, I can just change a few parameters. So now I'm going to change this to address 0 for what? Because it's going to be a write command. It's going to go into the write address. I'm going to leave my reg count at 10. I'm not going to change the swap code. I'm going to change my Modbus function code. I'm going to change it to preset multiple holding registers. And then the address in device. I'm going to go ahead and make this 100. Now what I can do, I can give it a different description for this command. So I can click OK on that. 
Now we have our two commands going to node number one. So I can expand that a little bit. So we see that our first command, our first command is reading values from address zero in Modbus address and device. In other words, it's reading from 40,001, the very first holding register, and we're placing them in address 1000 of the internal database on the MVI 69 MCM. And then we have the second command. The second command is writing 10 registers to address 40,101 on the Modbus device, node number one, and we're writing those values, we're getting them from address zero of the internal database on the MVI 69 MCM. So I can go ahead and click OK on that, and that should be good for node one. Now that we have node ID number one set up, now let's go ahead and add node number two. So what I'll do, I'll double click on Modbus port one commands, and I'm just going to choose one of these rows, and I'm going to go ahead and copy that row. So I'll click copy row, paste row double click on any portion of the row and what I'm going to do I'm going to change the node address to 2 I'm going to leave it on preset multiple holding registers and I gotta be sure I change the internal address because I don't want to use the same data that I'm using on my other command and I'll enter a 10 for the internal address so I'll click OK we'll copy the read row so I'll click on copy row paste row Again, I want to change the internal address because when I read, I don't want to write over the data that I'm reading already from node 1. Change the node address and click OK. Now we can look at our module configuration or port 1 Modbus commands that shows you a summary of how your commands are laid out. So I can drag this over a little bit. And I actually made a mistake. I put node address 10 in there, and I want to change that. I want to make that node 2. So I'll go back into my Modbus port 1 commands. I'll double click on that command. Change my node address to 2. And click OK. Click OK again. Now as we drag over, we can see how our commands are laid out. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open up port 2 and now we're going to set port 2 as a slave and I'm going to go ahead and leave all the parameters the same except for the slave address. Now since it is a slave it does need a slave address. So I'm going to go ahead and set my slave address. We'll go ahead and make my address 10 and again if there's any settings in here you're not familiar with by all means read the definition as well as the MVI 69 MCM user manual. So what's nice about being a slave is there are no Modbus commands to configure. Since the port's a slave, there are no master commands. So now what I can do, I can right click on MVI 69 MCM, choose download from PC to device, and when that window opens up, you'll choose the COM port you're using. And then we'll click on download, and we'll see that the configuration is being sent to the module. Well, that about does it for this training session. If you have any questions about this video or about any ProSoft technology products, by all means, give us a call and we'll be sure to help you out. Until next time, happy training. Bye.